The story of Vampira is one of those Hollywood type stories where you got this person who's a fast rising star and then flames out pretty quick and is never really able to recapture that fire again. Myla Elizabeth Serginiami was born in Massachusetts in 1922 to Finnish immigrants. She was known professionally as Myla Nermi. During her childhood, her family moved to Ohio, then Oregon. Her father worked as a lecturer and editor. Her mother worked as a part-time journalist and translator. Once out of high school, Nermi worked in a tuna cannery, then moved to Los Angeles to pursue an acting career and then ended up going to New York for modeling. She gained a foothold in the film industry with an uncredited role in the 1947 film If Winter Comes. On Broadway, she gained attention after appearing in the horror-themed midnight show Spook Scandals in which she screamed, fainted, lay in a coffin, and seductively danced around a cemetery. She was fired in 1944 by Mae West from the cast of West's Broadway play, Catherine Was Great, because West thought she was being upstaged. She also worked as a showgirl in a chorus line at the Florentine Gardens in the 1950s. She supported herself mainly by posing for pinup photos in men's magazines. When she moved back to California, she worked as a hatchet girl on California's Sunset Strip. The idea for the vampire character came in 53 when Nermi attended a masquerade ball in costume inspired by both the Dragon Lady from the comic strip Terry and the Pirates and as yet unnamed Morticia Adams from the New Yorker cartoons of Charles Adams. The Adams family didn't have first names until the television series came along. Nermi's appearance at the masquerade with pale white skin and a tight black dress caught the attention of a producer who wanted to hire her to host horror films on a Los Angeles television station. The name Vampira was an invention of Nermi's husband at that time. In 1954, the TV station aired a preview called Dig Me Later Vampira, and the vampire show aired the following night. In one publicity stunt, she ran as a candidate for the Nightmare of Hollywood with a platform of dead issues. In another, the TV station had her cruise around Hollywood as Vampira. The show was an immediate hit and she appeared as Vampira on TV comedy shows with Red Skelton, Peter Lorre, Bella Lugosi, Lon Chaney Jr., and George Goebel. Even Life Magazine ran an article on her. The TV series was canceled in 55 when Nermi had contract disagreements like refusing to sell them her rights to the character. So she took the show to a competing station. She was nominated for a Los Angeles Area Emmy Award for Most Outstanding Female Personality and returned to films with small roles in Too Much Too Soon, The Big Operator, and The Beat Generation. Of course, her best known appearance was in Plan 9 from Outer Space from 1959. On this movie, she said that at the time I thought it was horrible. I knew immediately I'd be committing professional suicide, but I thought, what choice do I have? Somehow I seem to be dead already. In 1960, she landed a few more small roles in I Passed for White, Sex Kittens Go to College, and The Magic Sword. A clip from Plan 9 of Vampira was used to start the original opening sequence of Chiller's Theater in the 1960s. Filmmaker and journalist R.H. Green verified longtime rumors that in 1956, Nermi was the model for Maleficent, the evil witch in the Disney version of Sleeping Beauty. By 1962, Nermi was making a living installing linoleum flooring and cleaning celebrities' homes. She opened Vampira's Attic, an antiques boutique on Melrose Avenue, and sold jewelry and clothing, but both those businesses failed. And in 1981, she was asked by a TV station to revive her character, Vampira. She was to get an executive producer credit, but eventually left the project over creative differences. According to Nermi, it was because the station cast comedic actress Cassandra Peterson in the part without consulting her. Unable to use the name Vampira, the show was renamed Elvira's Movie Macabre. And Nermi filed a lawsuit against Peterson. 
Peterson said that Elvira was nothing like Vampira aside from the basic design of the black dress and black hair. Nermi claimed that the entire Elvira persona, which included comedic dialogue and intentionally bad graveyard puns, infringed on her creation's distinctive dark dress, horror props, and special personality. The court ruled in favor of Peterson, holding that likeness means actual representation of another person's appearance and not simply a close resemblance. In 86, Nermi appeared alongside Tumata Duplenty of the punk rock band The Screamers in Rene Dolder's punk rock musical called Population. According to a Dolder interview, he said that there was a wild lady living out back in a shed. He ended up befriending her and found out that she played Vampira. In 1987, she recorded two 7-inch singles on Living Eye Records with the band Satan's Cheerleaders. The singles, I Am Damned and Genocide Utopia, were both released on colored vinyl. In 2001, Nermi started a website where she sold autographs and original art. Unlike Elvira, Nermi authorized very few merchandising contracts for a Vampira character, though the name and likeness has been used unofficially by various companies since the 1950s. And a few more bullet points on her life. In the 1940s, Nermi claimed that she had a child with Orson Welles, which may have been true. Since Welles was married to Rita Hayworth, the child was given up for adoption. In 55, a man forced his way to Nermi's apartment and terrorized her for almost four hours. She escaped and called the police. She had a few of these stalker type incidents. In the early 50s, Nermi was friends with James Dean and they spent time together at a coffee shop on Sunset Boulevard. She explained their friendship by saying, we have the same neurosis. In 49, Nermi married her first husband, a former child actor in silent films and later the screenwriter of Dirty Harry, Play Misty For Me, and other movies and TV episodes. She married her second husband, an actor named John Brinkley in 1958. She also married actor Fabrizio Mioni in 61. She was rumored to have had relationships with Elvis Presley, Howard Hughes, Marlon Brando, and a few other celebrities of that time. Where Cassandra Peterson played a bit of a kooky or eccentric character, she proved to be a pretty clever businesswoman and made a lucrative career with Elvira. Nermi, on the other hand, also played a bit of a kooky and eccentric character. But if you check out any of her interviews, she seems to have been that way in real life. And maybe because of that, she was unable to cash in on her creation or all of the famous relationships she had and ended up most of her life in obscure poverty. Nermi died of natural causes on January 10th, 2008 in her small Hollywood apartment at the age of 85. If it wasn't for Tim Burton's movie called Ed Wood, no one probably would even have heard of Ed Wood or Vampyra. She made television history the first horror movie hostess, and a flood of horror hosts followed after her. She was buried in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles. Her tombstone was partially funded by fan donations. That's it. If anyone made it through this, thanks for sticking it out. Good night. Boo.